You're listening to a message presented at New Market Christian Church. We're located at 300 South 3rd Street in New Market, Indiana. We meet for Sunday school at 9 o'clock and for worship at 10 o'clock each Sunday morning. If you do not have a church home, we'd love to invite you to join us here at New Market Christian Church. And now, a message by Dr. Gary Snowden. What are we going to do on Thursday? What What is this week? Thanksgiving. I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm planning to eat some food on, on Thursday. I, I am looking forward to Thanksgiving, but this whole time of getting ready for Thanksgiving has caused me to think about a lot of things going on here at church. I, I, I don't know. Whenever I look around, we got people doing all kinds of stuff. There's not very many of us, and for everything to work, everybody's got to be busy. And I started thinking, if I start thanking everybody that's doing stuff, Oh, we'll be here all day because everybody's doing something. So I'd just like to say, as the minister here working with you, I am thankful for all that you guys do. I called the, the sermon, get this, it's real original. Be thankful. It wasn't real hard to come up with the title. Just, just be thankful because that's what we need to be is thankful. When you think of the blessings that we've received, it is overwhelming. We have a ton of reasons to be thankful. As we, as we start this sermon on being thankful, I thought I'd share a story with you about two old friends that met each other on the street one day. You know, they're just walking down the street, they bump into one another, and one of them, he looked so doggone sad, he, it looked like he was on the verge of tears. His other friend looked at him and he said, what in the world is wrong? Why are you so sad? Has there been some kind of tragedy in your life? Well, what's happening? Well, that old sad fellow looked over at him. Well, just let me tell you. Let me tell you what's been going on in my life. You ain't going to believe this. So now, oh, about three weeks ago, my uncle died. And he left me $40,000. Well, that's a lot of money. I don't see why you're sad. That's a lot of money. What do you mean being so sad? No, no way, man. You, you just, that's only part of the story. You've got to understand. you got to understand, two weeks ago, a cousin died that I never knew. And that cousin left me $85,000. Man, he's just looking sad as could be. His friend looked over and said, I don't get it. I don't get the sad face. I mean, you've been very blessed. I don't understand. He's, well, you, you sure don't understand. Well, let me tell you. Just, just wait a minute. Let me, let me finish. He said, last week, my great aunt passed away. She left me a quarter of a million dollars. Right now the guy's going crazy. What is wrong with you? A quarter of a million dollars? That is a lot of money. You have been really, really blessed. By now the guy's about to pull his hair out. He can't figure out what in the world is wrong with this nutty friend of his. Why in the world are you looking so sad? He said, well, here's the thing. I got nada. Zero. It's nothing this week. <laughs> Man, you guys are slow. <laughs> now they're getting it. Five minutes later, they're starting to laugh. It's like... Friends, that's the problems with gifts that come on a regular basis. You just keep getting stuff, and you keep getting stuff, and eventually, you just come to kind of expect it. And, you know, I got... I got 40,000, I got 85,000, I got a quarter of a million. I, you know, you just get to where you expect it. And you begin to review all the things happening in your life, and you see them no longer as blessings, but you begin to see them as kind of entitlements. I'm worthy of this. I ought to get 40,000, I ought to get 85,000, I ought to get a quarter of a million. There should be a million coming this week. What's going on here? I mean... It gets to the point where we begin to look at these blessings as entitlements if we're not really, really careful. And doggone it, I tell you what, sometimes when you start looking at them that way, when the blessings dry up, 
you get downright aggravated. Well, well why, why am I not being blessed anymore? Now, if we're not careful, we can let the same thing happen when it comes to the blessings of God in our lives. The fact is, we don't deserve the homes that we live in. Now, I know, I know, we work hard for them. We go to work, we come home, we pay the bills, we pay the tax. I'm not sure we ever own them. And they want taxes every year. I think we're just renting them from the government. I know we work hard for them, but the bottom line is we couldn't work hard for them if God didn't give us the ability to work. The strong bodies, the strong minds, the capabilities to do the things that we do. We have the things we have because we've been blessed by God. We don't deserve the beautiful homes we live in. We don't deserve the beautiful parks that we have surrounding us here in Montgomery County. we got some cool stuff going on around here. We don't deserve it. We didn't earn it in any way, shape, or form. We don't deserve to be seated here in God's house on these nice soft pews today. We don't deserve the delicious food we're going to have on Thursday. I'm looking forward to Thursday this year. I, we don't deserve all that delicious food we're going to get. We don't deserve the clean water we have to drink. We've been blessed with these things by Almighty God. But we don't really deserve these blessings. We haven't earned these blessings. It's not something God is required to give us. We are blessed by our Heavenly Father because He loves us and He's chosen to bless us. Now I admit to you, I have been amply blessed. Obviously, I've had enough food to eat. And I'll tell you what, on top of that, I have an eye I couldn't see out a few weeks ago. I can actually, you're all fuzzy, but I can see you all through that eye now. I, I was able to read out of the Bible this morning. I haven't been able to do that for almost a year without really struggling. I've been blowing everything up bigger so that I can see it. I've been blessed in so many ways. I've been blessed with a wife who loves me. I don't know why, but she puts up with me. I've been blessed with children who turned out to be good people. I've been blessed. I got grandchildren. I adore those little stinkers. They're only as all get out, but I just love them to death. I have been blessed. But it's really easy to become ungrateful as we live our lives. We just begin to think these things are just going to always be there. It's easy to begin expecting everything to just go your way all the time. It's easy to begin feeling entitled in spite of the fact that all of these things are gifts from Almighty God. When one of these blessings is removed, it can throw a real kink in your day. And you're sitting there saying, well, I wouldn't miss just one little blessing. Yeah, right. You let your electricity go off for a few hours. Oh. <laughs> you let your electricity go off for a few hours and all at once, all at once, you're not happy anymore. I mean, it is really easy if you lose your electricity or if you lose your water for a little while, it's easy to become an Eeyore clone. You know what I'm talking about, Eeyore clone? Oh, woe's me, I think the whole world's out to get me. Oh, yeah, you've seen Eeyore on there. Uh, it's really easy to let those things get you down and take the rug out from under you. Friends, we need to realize how many ways we've been blessed. We need to give God praise for the blessings that he has bestowed upon us. It's so very easy to take our blessings for granted. I mean, my daughter made it from Tennessee to here. Riding with a dog. Not the dog in my backyard. You want to ride back with one? Just checking. Yeah. We need to begin focusing on what we do have rather than on what we don't have. If we do, if we change our focus and begin thanking God for all the things we've been blessed with, I tell you what, our attitudes will improve exponentially. The more you give God the praise, the better attitude you're going to have because you're going to start to realize you have got a whole lot to be thankful for. 
I like the way it's put in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18 there. It says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That's what he wants us to do. It's really easy to let the bad things in life overshadow all the good. Kind of like the illustration that we began with this morning. You can be blessed to the hilt and miss the whole thing because you're looking at the downside of it. You know, I think what Paul is saying there in 1 Thessalonians is, don't let that happen to you. He's telling me, Gary, don't you dare let that happen to you. It's possible to find the silver lining in life if you look hard enough for it, even whenever things are going really a little rough. Let me give you some examples. Now think about this. It's just not going to sound right to begin with, but if you listen to the whole thing, I think you'll understand. I am thankful for the teenager who's acting like a couch potato. I'm thankful for the teenager who's acting like a couch potato because that means he's at home and not on the street causing trouble. See the silver lining? Mm. I'm thankful for the taxes I pay because paying taxes means that I'm gainfully employed. I'm thankful for the mess that's waiting to be cleaned up after a big party. Because that means I've been surrounded by my friends. Unless it's little pieces of paper. I'm never thankful for little pieces of paper. (laughs) I am thankful for the the clothes that are a bit too tight. Because that means I've had enough to eat. I I love the illustration. A friend of mine, Max High, he was traveling down... uh, to uh, Wilmer Island School of Evangelism. He was going to go down and teach a class down there. And, and he was probably about my size. I mean, he's, he's bigger than me. But, but, uh, but they, were, they were going through his luggage. And as they did, they pulled out his underwear and held it up like this. And they said, Big fat man! Big fat man! Max said, I just will take him back. And one of the missionaries tapped me on the shoulder and said, Don't be offended. Since that's a compliment down here, it means you're a man that has enough money to have enough to eat. Big fat man. It's all in perspective, is it not? It's all in perspective. I'm thankful for a yard that needs to be raked because it means I have a yard. I'm even more thankful this week because somebody came and sucked all the leaves up. I didn't have to do it. It It's pretty cool. I'm thankful for gutters that need to be cleaned because it means I have a home to live in. I'm thankful for all the complaining I hear about our government. Because that means we have freedom of speech. There's a silver lining there in there. I'm thankful for the parking spot I found on the far side of the parking lot. Because that means that I've been blessed with transportation that needs to be parked. I'm not having to hoof it. I'm thankful for a huge heating bill because it means I've been warm. I'm thankful when I hear off-key music because it means I can hear. Who are you laughing at? (laughs) Music major? (laughs) I'm thankful for a big pile of laundry because it means I have clothes to wear. I'm thankful for aching muscles because it means I'm able to work really hard. I tore out a bathroom last week. Came home, couldn't hardly move the next day. But I am thankful that I was able to do it. You can find the silver lining. I'm thankful. Where's Carol? You know, you understand this one. Me too. Anybody else has had me done this? I'm thankful for the pain after surgery because I know the process is bringing healing. Yeah, you do. <laughs> they said, yep, I understand that one. I'm thankful for too many emails because it means I've got a lot of friends that are thinking about me. A bunch of salesmen, too, for that matter. 
I am thankful for the first hour of each day. That's a hard one. It can really be hectic that first hour. She needs the bathroom. I need the bathroom. She's doing this. I don't have any of that to do. I'm usually doing this. You know, it's... But the fact of the matter is, all of that stress points to the fact that I have a family. And a lot of people don't have that. I need to be thankful. I'm thankful for the challenges that I face at work because those challenges mean that I have a job. I'm thankful for the alarm that goes off every morning, even if I want to hit it a time or two. I'm thankful because it means I've lived to wake up another day. <clears throat> Thankfulness. It can be found even in the most challenging things in life if we look hard enough, if we dig deep enough. The fact is, learning to be thankful is going to help us in huge ways. Let me explain, as we kind of wind things down here. Thankfulness helps us acknowledge that God is our provider. Thankfulness keeps us from developing an Eeyore spirit, complaining spirit, if you will. Thankfulness creates a positive outlook for us in life. Thankfulness invites joy to dwell inside of our hearts. Thankfulness, I tell you what, this Thanksgiving season, don't let thankfulness slip away from you. I'd like to close today by reviewing the passage we examined earlier. It's the passage found there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. It's been up there throughout the service. It says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all... Yeah, you are with me. In all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And when we leave here today, what I want you to do is I want you to go home. I want you to sit down with your family and friends around you there in front of that full table. I want you to enjoy the bounty that you've been blessed with this Thursday. I want you to set aside a time as you enjoy the food and the feasting and say, God, I know these blessings come from you. That's what I want us to do this week. Let's remember to praise God for the many blessings that he's bestowed upon us. Let's take time to be truly, truly people that glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And let's let that praise begin right now as we stand together and as we lift our voices before God singing, We Will Glorify. You've been listening to a message presented by Dr. Gary Snowden, minister at New Market Christian Church. We would love to have you come join us as we seek to worship God, love one another, and reach out to our neighbors.